back at the other garage. I've um, turned the engine over just so I can get the sump off. That's the original tin sump from the Rover 800. It's got some fairly chunky looking dents, scrapes and scratches and a bit of rust as well. So I want to swap it for a nice alloy one from a 620 Ti which I think is a little bit shorter in depth which means I shouldn't get that kind of road rash scraping along and the risk of um, shattering my sump. Um, presumably it will have less oil volume but um, I'd rather have less oil volume than none at all if I stuffed the sump into something. Right, that's the 800 Vitesse tin sump. That is obviously the Ali um, 620Ti sump. You can see the difference in height. It's only about, I don't know, 10, 15 millimetres. But it's enough um, to help a little bit. Because it's shorter, it has to have a different um, pickup pipe as well. Because otherwise, if you put that on that one, um, it would just be, well, either wouldn't fit or it wouldn't be able to draw enough so yeah that needs to be swapped with that one and then the steel sump has a windage tray or windage tray whatever integral to it whereas this one has to have a separate bolted in there like so so that's all going to get cleaned up got a new gasket and um, it can all go back together again the next problem is how to fit the sump to the block because the block is um, tapped for M6 bolts for the tin sump whereas the Abbey one uses M8 so two options one is just run with the M8 and accept and hope that the clamping force is just going to do enough or find um, another bolt pattern and somebody has very helpfully sent me a link sorry I forget your name but um, he's told me about or I presume it's a he um, bolts which are an M6 thread but can have a shank which is thicker diameter Thinking about it, I'm not really sure that it's going to matter whether these are M6 or not because it's the clamping force and these use a big rubber gasket I don't know what I've done with it now but basically a big rubbery compression gasket Excuse me, that bad boy So um, I'm half thinking I might trial fit it and just see what it looks like with the M6 bolts and whether or not I think it's going to pull up okay. I was just looking at this again, uh, trying to work out what bolts to use. Obviously they need to be M6 thread, but um, I'm pretty sure M6 would pull up fine. This is the gasket that came with my new kit, and these holes are definitely M8 clearance type holes. When you look at the old gasket, although that was held in with M6 bolts, I've just torn this apart here and removed that steel spacer. So um, what I'm probably going to do is remove all the little steel spacers from the original sump gasket, insert them into here to like stabilise that area and then just use M6 bolts with a big head. Uh, I do have some, like so, but they're about 25 mil long instead of 12 or 13, which is what the car originally would have had. Longer doesn't really mean much of a problem, it's just that they will stick out and look rather gammy in the block, so um, basically I need to go and order some more bolts. I could reuse the ones that are in there, but the heads aren't really large enough um, to distribute the load in the way that I would like. Maybe they are, I don't know. Let's have a look. Mm. I don't know. 
it's marginal. These are bigger than the originals. We shall see. I'll think on it. It's bedtime now. I'm tired again. So well, I think it's about 11 p.m. But if I keep looking at stuff, my brain keeps ticking over, and I can, you know, end up working out what I need when I need it and um, making more progress than if I just left it for a few days without even looking at it. Right, today should be quite a good day. I've got pretty much 99% of all of the crap I need to put the engine back together. New gaskets, steel, spark plugs, HT leads, um, you name it. Hopefully it's here and it's just going to be a case of putting it all back together. I think in the last video I was chatting away about the sump and the different kinds of bolts. Thinking about it more. I think I'm just going to wang it together using the standard M6 bolts because it's such a chunky gasket and the heads of the bolts are actually quite generous that when it's nipped up, two things um, that would ordinarily worry me, it's cast alley so it's not going to deflect or bend like a shitty steel pressed um, sump and um, there's so much cushioning in there and there's no seaver involved so it's not going to get squidged out of the way by distortion of the um, like flanges on the sump so I pretty reassured myself that that's just going to go together nicely I bought myself a genuine Land Rover oil pump um, gasket because uh, the one that came in this kit <clears throat> I don't know whether you can see that one under there it's paper and Originally, it's not quite paper, it's that embossed semi-compressible gasket material, so it's probably going to do its job, but um, the original is actually tin, um, and it's designed to compress like so. So rather than use that weird papery one, I've bought a genuine Land Rover one, so hopefully that will seal. New timing belt kit, uh, that's a Klinger head gasket, so that's the four layer steel one that's meant to be really good for these turbo engines and it's the later design so that the um, oil restrictor from the block into the head that bit which you normally leaks doesn't have the copper um, thing in the head on these later vitesses it's all done by the gasket and so that's the correct one for that lots of bits and pieces to clean up before they go on but other than that it should be just quite a good fun day of bolting things up so that's what I'm going to do. First thing, I wasn't going to um, change the core plugs because looking in the water jacket, there's so little corrosion that I'm almost certain that they're going to be absolutely perfect. But somebody left a comment and that made me paranoid and I thought for the sakes of 12 quid or whatever it was, I might as well swap them. Um, these are aftermarket ones, but hopefully they'll be all right. Uh, so I'm just going to tap out the originals and knock the new ones in with uh, a socket and some Hylomar blue sealer. I really don't know why I bother sometimes. I cannot get that fucker out. They're well in there and ordinarily you can tap them, turn them from 90 degrees and pull them out. But that is wedged solid and I'll hold it now so it's not even as if I can leave it alone. So this is one of those jobs where I didn't need to do it and I'm really, 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 really pissed off. Cock. That put up a lot more of a fight than I was expecting. The reason being, it isn't corroded at all. So normally they half break up or they move or something. Basically, I didn't need to do this, um, but now I'm started, I might as well finish. Okay, last one. They are, like, basically completely corrosion-free, which is quite amazing, really. So I really didn't need to change them. But um, I guess the person who commented is right, you might as well. And I didn't know until I took them out. I had a suspicion they'd be absolutely perfect because the water jacket's mint inside. Uh, but I thought before I finish, I might as well show you my preferred technique for doing it. <laughs> if I can get the camera do what I want it to do. Basically 
I always hit one edge, like not the flangey bit, but actually the face with a, a blunt or knackered screwdriver or chisel or something. And then by pushing the bottom in, hopefully it rotates to 90 degrees and then you can just grab it with the pliers and pull it out. It saves you having to like, um, you know, get really creative trying to pull it out afterwards. If you hit all sides at the same time, it doesn't really work. So, oh, I haven't got you where to put the camera, hold on. Well, that didn't quite work. Usually they spin about their central axis and you can just pull them out with the pliers at that stage. This one's gone into the core, which is a bit annoying, but we'll get it. Oh, bollocks. Uh, right, I have to turn the brock upside down and roll it up. <coughs> Again, pretty much no corrosion. Core plugs balanced in place. I'm using Hylamar Blue. You don't, well, you re read different things about whether or not you're going to put a sealer on core plugs. A lot of people don't bother. Um, I do, and I um, never had one leak, but then again, I've never done one where I didn't put sealer, so I've got. No real comparison, I just do it because I can, and I figured it will help in some way, so just going to use a socket to drive them in now. Sump about to go on, the seal itself doesn't need any um, additional sealer, it's just rubber between the alley and the block, but you do need sealer where the, um, what, are the what are these, basically got little grooves here where that part bolts in front and back so just to put a bit of sealer on there I've decided to go for this stuff because it's a semi hardening one um, it probably is an RTV type thing but it remains flexible but it's a little bit more like a gasket um, than Hylomar exciting times Head gasket fitted, mating face is all cleaned up. Now I'm just going to lift that on, post the bolts through. Incidentally, um, the kit came with these bolts and they have tightening torques and sequence on here. T series, you get different types of bolts. Some are um, 70 Newton meters, these are 80, and then um, 90 degree angle turn at the end change of camera again because I've run out of batteries in the other one yeah cylinder head lifted on I am just going to now get a bit of oil put it on the threads of the new bolts so that they torque up consistently and under the heads as well um, I think I might have mentioned it in the video just then but basically the T16s you get two different types of bolts and they're all stretch bolts but the tightening regime for each of them is different the original bolts uh, the way you tell the difference is because it's stamped into the heads. Z these are the original bolts, um, KX, and I can't remember now, but basically there's another different type to KX, and um, the tightening torques, you, I think you do 45 newton meters on all of them, and then it's either 80 or 70, depending on which bolts you've got, and then a further 90 degrees. So um, this one, these aftermarket bolts on either the KX or the other Rover one that was used. It's something completely different. So I'm just going to follow the tightening regime that came with my kit. Um, 80 is actually on the higher end anyway, so it ain't going to fall off. So yeah, 
lube the bolts, drop them in, nip them up, and then I might need to go and get a glamorous assistant to hold the block while I do the final 90 degree tightening because I won't be able to stop it spinning around on its trolley. I've just had a hand for my um, brother-in-law who very kindly held the engine steady while I talked that down. So that is all good. Clean the cams up just because there was a tiny bit of dust on them. I'm going to re um, reinstall the cam covers. The old seals are like really horribly stiff and hard and you know they are the original ones got nice new flexible soft ones to go on and then just a whole load of little what are they m6 bolts to go back in i was going to buy one of those stainless steel bling kits but i actually quite like the look of the black ones so i'll stay original i think um after that i'll do the cam seals and the plugs on the far end of the cams um I could have done it while it was off the car, but there's a bit of levering and poking, so I'd rot sorry, I could have done it when the head was off the block, but I'm gonna do it while it's on here because there's less damage or less risk of me moving the head and damaging the mating faces. Just popped the uh, old cam seals off the gearbox end of the engine, gonna put new ones in. There's no real evidence they were leaking, but you know, might as well. That's been quite a successful day. I haven't finished everything I wanted to. Um, next sensible thing to do is to fit the injectors and fuel rail into the manifold, which I've just loosely bolted up. Um, and I'll show you that tomorrow. See you later. Made quite a lot of progress. The cam seals are done, the cam blanking plates on the other end are done, both bottom end main seals, front and rear. Now I'm going to install my injectors. They're standard uh, blue stripe, that bit, wasted spark injectors from a Vitesse. Um, I've sent them off and had them ultrasonically cleaned, flow checked, had the little integral filters changed and new O-rings. And then I've bought myself some new clips to hold them to the fuel rail, which is there. Uh, so I'm going to install those and I'll probably put a little bit of Vaseline or silicon grease just on the um, tips. And then that whole assembly gets dropped in and bolted onto the lower part of the inlet manifold. And when that's in, I can put the top part on with its new gasket, which is down there. Right, that's all done. I'm not doing kind of action shots because it's all boring putting stuff back together. It's not that interesting. So I'm just going to continue doing um, either photos or uh, brief little videos like that. Just telling the story really. I forgot my top part of the plenum is rather ropey looking. So I've been sanding that down. I'm going to give it some etch primer and then some satin black and then while that's drying I go and have a cup of tea. It's quite cool to the touch so I think what I'll do is do all the sanding, do all the prep work, degrease it and then I might put my little heat gun inside to warm it up a bit which will help paint go off faster which means by the time I come back from my cup of tea should be go, uh, good to bolt back on. Well I've had my cup of tea and I've painted that top inlet but I'm waiting for the paint to go off. While I'm doing that, I'm going to fit some studs to the exhaust side of the cylinder head. These are almost always knackered, the threads in here. You can already see one of them's been helicoiled. So I'm going to run a tap and die into those and just see how many threads are remaining on the others. I might do some more helicoiling for the other ones, um, or I might just wang these in and see how well they hold. And that's a result. I just boshed that M10 tap in and out of the other four and they're perfect. Clean as a whistle and no maligned threads. So I'm going to put a bit of copper slip on these and then put them in and then um, work out what goes next, whether it's the thermostat housing, top elbow, the big casting that goes on there or the manifold. I don't think it really matters, but there'll be some which are easier to bolt in than others. I think I'm getting there. It appears it doesn't much matter. 
one thing I did want to do first was offer up the manifold because sometimes when stuff gets helicoiled it's not actually straight and you might have to wind the studs in after the manifolds up. I've also put copper slip on the stainless into the alley head so hopefully they're not a nightmare to get out in the future. This is a very nice thing to have. It took me ages to find them but I have now got stainless steel water rails. Thank you to Ian for sorting me with these but um, on that Rover 420 GSI, the normally aspirated Tora that I had, I had to um, take the original coolant ones off and weld repair them. They're a notorious rot spot on these, but um, yeah, to have stainless ones is really cool because I should never have an issue. So I'll just clean those up. That one sits on that top mount for the manifold, which is why I've got it out ready to go now. And then it should bolt up somewhere on that side. I'm not quite sure where, but probably one of those holes once the coil pack mount is in. And then this one <coughs> bolts on top of that. There was a stud snapped off in there, but I've drilled it out and re-tapped them. So they're all good to go. Next, I'm just cleaning up the front um, cover and water pump and power steering housing. That seats against there with an O-ring, which is in that bag here. And again, using Hylomar blue just to seal that. And then I'll bolt that on, torque it all up. I think I'm continuing my two steps forward, one step back uh, process. Just bolted that alley housing on, put a bit of um, red sealer around the O-ring between that and the block. I'm not convinced it's the greatest stuff in the world because all of this bit I did yesterday and fair enough it's a non-setting compound but the Hylomar is also a non-setting compound but it is a lot more resistant you know it really beads up and goes fairly hard so that that bit there you can't move easily with your finger unless you put quite a lot of pressure on and even then it doesn't really come off it just sort of hangs there whereas this red stuff i bought it's only cheap shit that i got from my local petrol station but it's like still incredibly runny and that's been there for 24 hours so basically i've lost my confidence in the red stuff so i'm going to take the engine mount off again that housing off again and then I'm gonna replace the sealer with my lock Loctite black wherever it is this stuff I've used on loads of engines and it's really for oil areas but it works fine on water as well or well, in my experience it does so I'm a lot more confident in this so I'm gonna pull that off do it all again quite possibly entirely unnecessary but it's all stripped off now, cleaned up my o-ring that hasn't been damaged or crushed or anything. So yeah, I'm just going to put it all back together but with some uh, sealer that I probably trust a little bit more. Got a new gasket for the inlet. Oh yeah, incidentally, put all that back on. Um, it's probably overkill but you know, um, I would have been annoyed with myself had that leaked and I'd not done anything about it. So. Uh, the top part of the plenum is painted, it's satin but it's still wet so um, that needs to dry off a little bit. Then I shall mount that on there. The cam cover also acts as a top mount for that and I was missing the little brackets so I bought those, they weren't expensive. It might look like I'm buying loads of parts and I am and this car is going to owe me a lot of money even though I was actually given it for free by Mike at NPR which is pretty goddamn cool of him really so um, yeah they go on there then you've got a little short m6 bolt on there and another one into the top of the plenum so I shall go and find them They're somewhere over there I think kind of coming towards the end of what I'll be doing today just running out of time again um, this is something I've been after for a while um, harder to track down now than they used to be but it's an alley intake adapter basically uh, i don't know whether you've watched any of my videos on that t-series in the little green rover 400 estate but the originals are rubber and they split so back when t16 engines were popular um they're not unpopular now it's just that there are less of them about more modern cars have come along but yeah you used to be able to buy alley blocks like this which get rid of the rubber bit so yeah i've got that to go on um, with a few cap 
head bolts which will fit into those recesses nicely so they don't drop them everywhere. Right, kind of done for today but it does look really good. The next thing to do and next time I'm back with the car or the engine at least is mount the turbo. This is the big or bigger T28 of the Nissan 200SX. So there's some fanning around to do but it will be nice to have it on there and progress being made.